This is Twit. I saw an article that says we've spent hundreds of billions of dollars on self-driving vehicles and they still aren't self-driving. Is that a fair uh, categorization, Sam? So, you know, the industry as a whole has spent somewhere in the order of about $100 billion over the last 12, 15 years yes. on automated driving. Um, but there is a there is a very big difference here. You know, and, you know, if you take a Tesla and their fake full self-driving, um, you know, I think the, the, the guy that wrote this got it got a lot wrong. This is this Max Chafkin writing for business. Right. Week, we should. We so, should say. you know, this. This started from, you know, actually trying to solve some very specific problems. I mean, with the DARPA challenge, it started with, you know, trying to get vehicles that could go into um, combat zones, you know, and not have to take people in there. Um, but, you know, once it got into trying to get it, trying to commercialize the technology, you know, it was it was trying to solve some real problems around safety, traffic safety, um, mobility for people who can't drive, you know, to provide them with mobility. Um, and going back to what, uh, you know, the, the example of these Lenovo glasses that Daniel brought up, you know, the rest of the industry, apart from Tesla, you know, has actually recognized that doing a more focused approach, like what Lenovo is doing, you know, having a very specific task that you're doing with it, not trying to you know, recognizing that, okay, this is a really hard problem to solve. Um, you know, they have actually made tremendous progress over the last 15 years, um, but not trying to do everything, but rather, you know, focus it on specific tasks uh, like robo taxis in urban environments, like last mile deliveries, automated trucking, um, where, you're not trying to do, you're not trying to solve everything, but you're trying to do specific things. It can actually work quite well. Um, I was just in a, in a couple of vehicles uh, earlier this week with a company um, driving around Dearborn and it was not Ford, um, but uh, you know, driving around, riding, actually riding around Dearborn, you know, and the system was working really, really well. I was in San Francisco last month with Cruise, you know, and the system worked, very, very well. I've seen a, a tremendous amount of progress, you know, early on, you know, this, these systems were very crude, um, but they, you know, we are getting to the point we've, we've got some real world um, driverless deployments going on now in San Francisco and Arizona. Uh, we're going to have quite a few more coming in 2023 from a number of different companies in places like Austin, Miami, San Diego, Las Vegas. Uh, and it's, it's slowly getting there, but the, the kind, you know, being more focused rather than trying to solve, rather than trying to boil the ocean as Tesla want, seems to want to do, you know, they're trying to boil a pot of water first. And then once they get that going, then go to a, move to a bigger pot and, and so on. The article quotes uh, one of the early and best known pioneers of self-driving, uh, Anthony Lewandowski, who, of course, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust anything that Lewandowski <laughs> he, he, says. He uh, left Google under a cloud, uh, taking a bunch of documents with him, and Google sued and so forth. He has a new uh, startup that does uh, dump trucks. Basically, they're not even driving the roads; they're on industrial sites. He said, "You'd be hard pressed to find another industry that's invested so many dollars in R and D that's delivered so little." Forget about profits. What's the combined revenue of all the robo taxi, robo truck, robo whatever companies? It's like a million dollars, or maybe not even that much, maybe zero. He also quotes George Hotz, who is, uh, you know, pretty. I think pretty another impressive. another person with zero credibility. In oh, this okay, field. all right. He's the guy who created Comma AI and uh, has a kind of an add-on that you can put in your car and mm -hmm. turn it self-driving. He says it's a scam. He's not his company, but well, self-driving. I mean, you know, George Hotz, you know, back in 2016, I was uh, chairing a conference in San Francisco. He was supposed to speak at that conference. And the, the, that morning I was walking into the event space for it and I checked my messages and I saw uh, a notification on their TechCrunch story that the day before or a couple of days before NHTSA had sent a letter to comma AI saying, Hey, we would like some more information about what you're doing. It wasn't threatening. They just, they just was just asking for information about what they were doing. Hots immediately pulled the plug on the whole project 
and said, nope, okay, we're, we're not going to do this because, you know, he was, the, he was the scammer. He, yeah. I mean, if anybody knows what it's a scam is, okay. it's him. Right. You know, what he was doing was never going to work. <clears throat> So these are two people who you would expect to actually be pretty dismissive of any attempt. Yes. Uh, by Waymo Absolutely. or Cruise to uh, do self-driving. Yeah. What's the time frame, Sam, for uh, level five? Uh, level five, probably never. Never. Um, mm. Or at least a very long time. Level five but, is true self-driving, right? Well, no. So level four and level five are both true self-driving. The distinction is level five can do it anywhere, anytime. Level four means you can do full self-driving within some uh, limited parameters. It might be a, limited to a geographic area. It might be limited based on weather conditions uh, or specific tasks. It's just, it's just has some kind of limited operating domain. So, you know, it's still self-driving. It's still fully automated. It's just, it can't necessarily do it everywhere. And you can still get tremendous value out of doing it even in a limited environment. I do. I'm like you. I remember the early Grand DARPA challenges. We used to make fun of them on the screensavers 20 years ago. These cars mm -hmm. would go three feet and go off the road. I mean, it was they were really terrible and Let, very made yeah. a lot of progress really, really quickly. A few mm -hmm. years later, they were they were doing the whole challenge. Uh, they had to make it longer and more difficult because the cars got better. But isn't this always the case with AI that the 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 early stuff, the first 80 percent, is relatively easy. It's that last 10% that kills you. Yeah. I mean, that was a rule of thumb I learned very early on in my engineering career. Is, you know, the first 90% of any project takes 10% of the effort. Right. And then the last 10% oh. requires 90% of the effort. And, you know, we're, we're still, you know, very early on in that last 10%. There's still a long way to go. But there are, there are real world applications where this is being used today. And that will continue to grow over the next several years. I just, I want to back up what you're saying, Sam. I mean, I personally, like you can go to my Twitter. I'm very, very skeptical mm -hmm. of Elon and full self-driving. And I really, I'm, I support the efforts of the uh, National Highway and Traffic Safety Institute to uh, look at what is happening there. That said, I would really encourage any of your listeners uh, or viewers that are, are skeptical about this, go out and try GM Super Cruise. I am not a GM fan. I would not own one of those cars, but it's a really really, really impressive technology. If I still had a job where like I had to drive into downtown Boston every single day, that's going to take care of 90% of it for you. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason is exactly what you're saying, Sam, it's a very limited use case. So I'm trying to drive down 95 and deal with the traffic there. And yes, I've got to keep my eyes on the road. I've got to be aware and ready to take over it every single minute, but it's going to do 90% of the work for me. That work is like that feature is something this our industry has been able to deliver at this point. And it's good. You know, Porsche has a variation of this. Um, I, I almost think like it's it's like we set our sights too high. And it's not helped by Elon like hyping something that I just I frankly don't think is ever going to happen from my point of view. I think if we had set more attainable smaller goals and delivered that to people while working within this regulatory framework to keep the public safe. I think it would have been a better course of action. This is a uh, yeah, and that's what the rest of the industry is is trying to do. Is they're trying to do it safely, trying to yeah. you know each each thing before they release it to the public. Instead of having members of the public beta testing safety critical software, they're doing it internally with professionals, and only when they are highly confident that it's going to work reliably, then they release it. I mean, that's definitely true. But I'm just going to say it's also because they're doing all that work only because Tesla is like cowboys in the West, right? They did this. They're putting out in the streets already, as you say, beta testing it with just regular people. I mean, it was them that, dro that drove this, you know, whole industry. And now everybody Actually, else is mo doing Most of this thing. effort started long before Tesla got involved yeah. in it. Um, yeah, but I would Tesla, say Tesla they really brought it really to it. Until yeah, te Tesla brought it to the public's attention, but the the work was happening many years before um, before Musk ever you know went down this path. Yeah, right. As, as well, I mean, Elon, it's with electric cars. You he's, know, he's taken yeah. all the sensors out except the cameras. Right? He's now says, yeah, all yeah. you need is cameras. You don't need lidar. You do yeah, um, he's wrong. So yeah, that seems like a bad idea. <laughs> so. Uh, 
then why is he doing it? <laughs> um, because, I mean, he's, because he's doubling down. Um, because if he, can, yeah. if he can get somebody to pay $15,000 for the full self driving option on the vehicles, <laughs> that is about $14,800 worth of pure profit. I wasted $5,000 on my Model X for self driving, which I never got. In the, in, and then finally the lease ran out. And so I just gave it back. But uh, I would never, never spend money on any promise of full self driving. Uh, yeah, Tesla. I mean, you, I, I, you know, I, I, on, you know, on, on the radio show, you talk all, and you know, on the podcast, you have always talked about, you know, never buy a piece of hardware, a product with the promise of what it might someday do. Buy it based on what it does Cause, today. Because it if, never if does you get, it. <laughs> if, and if you and if you get, if it improves over time, great, it's a bonus. <laughs> but do not buy something expecting that someday it might do something it doesn't do today. It's kind of then. A, I was kind that's of a losing a proposition sucker for Elon. I also bought the bioweapon mm -hmm. defense mode. I bought the oh, ludicrous boy. acceleration mode. <laughs> oh, boy. I was a yeah. Oh boy! In hindsight, I look like an idiot. Maybe even in uh, foresight and middle sight, I look like an idiot. Uh, let's yeah, we had some reporting that came out that showed that Elon was trying to pressure all of his engineers to limit the camera to two cameras because he kept telling the engineering team that look, humans have two eyes. That should be good. That should enough. do. That should be fine. <laughs> Well, even how can he be so with, stupid? You're not. You got a car. You got, got two eyes, but you don't see everything that's happening around the car with your two eyes. Well, and, and, and cameras even, are cheap. How many cameras co are going to be are on the on the Quest Pro? Eleven. How many going to be on the Apple? Uh, reportedly fourteen. Why would you reduce it in a hundred thousand dollar vehicle to two? Well, and and they've got eight cameras on Tesla vehicles today. And the thing is, they're not even configured the way our human eyes are. Our human eyes are both looking in the same direction. And, you know, you, you can take advantage of the parallax of your two eyes seeing the same object from slightly different points of view to do depth perception. Tesla doesn't even do that. The cameras are all pointing in different directions. <laughs> so you can't, even, you can't even do accurate distance measurement with the way they have their cameras configured. <laughs> It's all their distance measurement is done by inference, which oh, is an wow. inherently bad way oh, to do that's it. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I thought they had sensors on the gull wing or falcon wing, whatever kind of wing doors oh. they had that it wouldn't hit anything. Right. I mean, I, I was certainly given that impression, but it kept hitting Lisa in the head. <laughs> <laughs> she really hated that car. She called it Christine. She did not. She did not like that car. <laughs>